Hello everyone, welcome back to another video for me, Beast of my name. And today in that video, we want to talk about the newest update, which just came out one day ago. I have here above myself, you see that Duduino in the middle and Dav on top. Um, we're going to talk today about the update, giving our opinions, our different views on it. And, and basically, yeah, just talking about it. Simple as that. Um, all right, I would say we're going to start from the top. And that is a major update. And that is the release of the Wii system, right? I think that's a, that's a part where we are right now all hyped for. Like the home VM, how's that thing working? Um, also with the King system then. Um, so yeah, let's go uh, through this here. After the end of season one, this land will be preserved as the home VM, becoming the eternal home and starting point for players' conquest. In the season after season one, players can choose to stay in the home VM or entering the season server to compete. Players can always move back to the home VM at any time from anywhere. Um, I mean, if you guys know Rise of Kingdoms, then you will see that pretty familiar, right? It's um, pretty similar to the system, what we have in Rise of Kingdoms. But um, what do you guys think about that? Is that, a, is that an overall good move that we're having now with Home Kingdom system? Or would you say the current system which we have with a division migration and that we have just a migration then into these different divisions is a better system? Anyone on you can start. I mean, like I said uh, earlier, I mean, if we, we can see from servers like 296, right, who had a mass migration out, so they basically have an empty server. So in yeah. the future, they got basically an empty template. They can now recruit in small groups of players who are actually active and want to rebuild the kingdom, and they can basically build it from the ground up. You know, they don't have all the empty trash. They don't have the... People who left, they could just start from scratch and create their own kingdom, potentially rising them back mm. to the top or, you know, wherever they kind of want to go. That's kind of my thoughts on that. I I think that uh, the only negative side of it is that, uh, you know, if it works like how it does in Rise of Kingdoms, then stronger players or like mainly like whales are going to have to spend a lot more to actually migrate. So instead of the 5,000 gems that they would have to otherwise, now mm -hmm. people would have to, you know, like spend $500 to $1,000 just to migrate. Yeah. And then yeah. also to have you on that too. I mean, coming from Rise of Kingdoms, is a, I mean, I left at 150 million power, only played for a year, and it was because of two KVKs in a row. You know, as soon as KVKs went poorly, everyone's trying to migrate out. And here I am paying, you know, like almost a thousand dollars just to move, mm. you know, to follow the crowd, and it's it just gets expensive. And when you do it twice in a row, it it was easy to quit. So I'm hoping this game kind of goes the cheaper route, sticks around like the five thousand gems, or maybe something similar, you know, maybe a single pack. Well, uh, they, um, I think they. Uh, showed it in their video. Um, if I find it, guys, I will, I will blend it uh, in the video. Um, where they already announced that we're gonna have an item for moving. Um, that's already 100% announced. So there will be a specific migration item, um, which can either be gotten from buying or from the Alliance store, if I'm not wrong. I think that's what they already have announced in the previous video, which they did about the update. Um, again, if I find it, I will blend it in and so you guys see it. But yeah, I agree with the point of that in Rise of Kingdoms, it's very, very expensive for especially high power players um, to migrate to a new server. Um, I will also show you here now uh, the picture of the migration cost. And as you can see there, that is expensive as hell. I think, um, like, how much does it cost for a 100 million guy to migrate? Like, maybe at least a couple uh, hundred bucks, right? Like, I think he needs to buy the full bag, the full bundle, multiple times. Um, so that's for sure, like, I think it's like 770 or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, like, for my, for one time migration, think about that. Um, 
And sure, you can get it over the Alliance store, over the Alliance credits or, or um, personal coins, right? But um, it's it's very expensive. I think one costs you f like what six hundred k in Rise of Kingdoms. Uh so I mean, we... I was only able to collect like a million credits so far. Yeah. Um. I need. For us, we are we are lucky, right? Like, uh, two ninety three will be full. Uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, when we getting our division migration, uh, the last time, um, but for all the people after that who, for example, want to migrate into two ninety three, for example, if you want to bring our main account, right? Like myself, I want to bring my main account over, and I'm right now seventeen million on my main. Um, it probably gonna cost me amount of um AFA coins from the alliance or money uh, so i need to see exactly how that will work out so i'm there on your side with hoping that it's not be like in voice of kingdoms in terms of expensive um but overall i think the home wheel is a good thing um that's what i have requested also on the colony event last um, year in november um I was talking there with a, a developer directly and I said to him, like, get, uh, we need to get something like a home kingdom system like we have in Rise of Kingdom. So people have like an um, feeling of they building up a community, they building up a server because right now, in my opinion, it's just like alliances versus alliances. It's not server based. It's just their number which you are in, but mainly you just play with the alliance you are, right? For example, EIS on my main, they just moved out from um from 68 to 61, right? It costs uh, just have cost 5k. So there is no re identity to your server. It's more identity to a alliance you are currently in, which I find is over a long term one from the game not good. So I'm very happy that they have announced this kind of home kingdom stuff where we have an, a server identity. I definitely um, agree. I mean, Call of Dragons has better combat, in my opinion, but Rise of Kingdoms has the community. Yeah. You know, it's overall. So that's kind of where I think. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, then, obviously, we're getting the King system, which we also have announced already. In Season 1, the Alliance Leader who successfully occupies the Flame Dragon will become the King of the Realm. As the Supreme Leader of the Realm, the High King has a series of privileges and missions. Um, so he getting an exclusive other avatar frame and nameplate, receive a weekly refresh on of an exclusive chest. Um, I think it's gonna be also like um, right where you can give it to anyone maybe like in Rise of Kingdoms. That would be nice. So I can, um, or like or or every king can reward when the people, for example, that are for for their work, um, or heavy fighters who did like uh, carry by themselves. Uh, a lot, stuff like that, which uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, gift yeah, it would help me a lot. <laughs> uh, well, for the four, I would probably do it randomly, to be honest, man. Really, everyone... really, huh? Okay, okay, okay. I mean, we need to see how many chefs because right now it's an of an exclusive chef, right? It's sounding like you have only yeah. one per week. So if it's really one per week, then I would probably do it randomly. And the person who would get the chef in the current week is getting out for the next week. I mean, I mean, we can we can discuss that system later. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, no, like, no, there's nothing hey, to this, discuss. That's sweet, something I don't know. <laughs> This week, top whatever, you know, like, hey, top yeah. farmer, top whatever the week, the week of the flavor is. I mean, know. I mean, I, I was thinking more along flavor the lines of, you know, you should uh, push people for D5. So whoever's like closer to D5, you should give them the chests nah, on priority. Dude. Just be like, hey, this week, there's nothing going on. Whoever the farmer's the most gets it or like whatever, you know, it could be yeah. something simple, easy. Hey, yeah. Darth, I appreciate how much work you do. Here you go. Have the exclusive <laughs> yeah. chest eight why, weeks in a row. Why does Darth win every week? This is Bro. so weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, yeah, but I think we all agree that's, that's pretty nice that we're getting the exclusive chest so that the king can give yeah. something back to everyone. Um, yeah. 
gifted with extraordinary talent. Use your hiking skills to bring benefits to your home. We are speeding up its development. Alternatively, use special skills embedded to increase your strength. That's something what we're gonna see on the bottom. So we're coming later back to that point. Um, let's move on. The William titles, right? It's it's basically the King titles. Um, where I saw there was like a like a second of it showed in the video. So if I find it, I will blend it in you uh, here also. Um, so you have like um, there was the king on top, and then three under the king. So that probably the queen, the general, and um, stuff like that. And all these bar, uh, all these sizes have uh, obviously special buffs again. Um, what we saw for uh, for sure was the king get five percent attack, five percent HP, and five percent uh, defense. So that's massively for um, any whale, right? Like red, as Lord yeah. uh, Dorino, you said. Like for every whale, that's a massive buff. So for myself with my twenty five million account, I will obviously not holding that buff in a war situation. That's so stupid. Um, but yeah, for any the guy who's shot calling, give him that buff, you know, and he's got oh, that, a little yeah. bit more to help, you know, lead the front, I guess you could say. Yeah, that also, um, because if we moving on, then, um, was there, was it here already or was it on the bottom? I think it was on the bottom. Um, yeah, so the titles will be very interesting. And it's also got it said in the video that we're going to have um, positive and negative titles. So we have also titles where we can punish people for, I don't know, being a rook or something like that or killing farmers. Yeah. And I don't know if it's going to be worked like in Rise of Kingdoms, but the titles um, basically showed always the position of that uh, person. So whoever was having this title, you could click on the title. Um, and it has sent you to a location to the player who have a title. So it's pretty nice, for example, for a farm killer um, or a root player in your kingdom to see then over time the position from the player. Yeah, especially like uh, rogue players, you know, those guys who just want to yeah. do their own thing, for sure. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I, need, I think we need to see like... Um, I probably, you know what I'm gonna do. When next, uh, so should be the should it be the case that we're not gonna have our um William next season and only this uh, um only this kingdoms in the current season um one. Then I'm probably gonna do an account in season one, so just to check how it looks. But it would be one because it's they're just saying after the end of season one, the land will be preserved. As for home we mm. I guess we need to see next week because they uh I remember that they also said in the in the uh, 1.0.26 or something it kinda come out. So I don't know. There was also rumors going out. I guess we just need to see if it's actually coming out next week or not. Um uh, but it's nice to see if the the information. And that's what I'm very happy about. Send mail to all players in the home we simultaneously. That is so massive good. Because right now we're using this for Discord, right guys? We're sending out an announcement for everyone, but we're not having that in-game. So um, we would need to send that in every alliance by ourselves. Now, whoever is king can ju just send out this mail to everyone in that server. This is so good. This makes, this makes it just easier. It's just like one move which makes it way easier for us to um yeah to send out mails and announcements i just hope it doesn't have like a you know absurdly long cooldown or something i, I mean i'm no. sure it'll have some sort of cooldown i don't think so nah, because in rights of kingdoms you could always spam like these mails oh okay and you wouldn't be king very long if you were just spamming nonsense either so <laughs> <It would. laughs> yeah because yeah, like right. in uh i think like white art survival uh, you had like a twelve-hour cooldown, or what? more. Well, that's yeah. massive. Yeah, no, no, yeah, things, right. no. We never were having something like that when it comes to mails. So I mean, it's, I mean, they're just not saying it. Yeah. There's a what maybe you forget about too is there's also a bunch of people like just tagged along in the server. Could be in very small alliances that 
didn't even know really all this stuff's going on. So they start catching on to all these things happening, and they're like, oh, wait, my farm alliance isn't the game? <laughs> like, oh, wow. I should power up. Yeah. Uh, what's that? Oh, oh, now, oh, now we coming, now we coming to a point where <laughs> that's very nice. Uh, players in the home will can increase their uh, worms taxes by gathering and completing daily quests. Where hiking can use taxes to activate re uh, re buffs, use combat skills or point titles. Oh, okay. So everyone basically needs to do these gathering and daily quests. So I can you actually can do fed. stuff. No, no, not about that, but also use for combat skills, which we, again, coming later to when we going down, yeah, yeah. but also appointing titles. And, okay, that's interesting. I didn't read that. Um, so, basically, for appointing the titles, it costs you really something. In Rise of Kingdom, it wasn't like that. Okay, that's, uh, that's yeah. interesting. Um, in addition... So, oh, when uh, I played Rise of Kingdoms back in the day, it became actually a, a big deal. It was like, whoever was the guy assigning titles it was like his full-time job was just oh titles yeah to people like random oh. people throughout the entire kingdom like hey i need this buff for this and it was like yeah just swapping the guy who can assign titles and it was, it just got too annoying it was so yeah. frustrating oh yeah like you would that's, just that's be a, the same. you would just be watching the global chat or you know whatever hey okay this guy needs a title and you would just yeah. have to like base it off your own assessment okay is this guy worthy of a title no yeah. Yes, no. Or we need to see because I mean, we can always uh, we can always have the system where you know you can have like a Discord or a Google Sheet or something where people can request for the title and you can key them into a schedule. Yeah. Or as a Keenum, you could just say no. Hey, go fuck yourself. I mean, <laughs> and yeah. Do it on your own, right? Like assign it as needed. Don't do it by request because if you do it by request it's you're just gonna get spanned by the entire you know thousand people in your server mm. yeah. well, we i mean to see if you're how like much trying to cost, build right? a community well if you do it from the start in my opinion you start it from the beginning and you just start giving it out it's going to be expected forever so it's either do that or or don't do it at all i mean especially if it's going to tax your r4s forever indefinitely mm. You know, like that's something to think about, right? Like you're just gonna tax out R fours, giving out titles. Like that's. I I think the request system is then better. We can so we can assess if people even need it or not. Yeah, if guys, hey, I'm gonna do this push this day. I want this title this time for an hour, whatever. You know, it could be anything, but yeah. To do by request, I I watched it in Rise of Kingdoms where it would just be dudes rotating the title. Giving everyone the title, everyone the the whatever the subtitle is, and just getting like it was stupid. It was nonsense. Yeah, it's I, it's it's not funny at all. Um, I guess we need to see how that works. Like, uh, since it costs you taxes for appointing titles, right? Like, if it's costing you every time you're appointing someone with a king title or like a realm title, I don't know. Let's say one hundred taxes, and you getting per day from each player or i don't know 500 oh. um it's gonna be oh, kind well, of that, that sounds like the solution then it's like hey we can only do it so many times so yeah now yeah. you don't have to lie and be like no no it's hey <laughs> we legitimately don't have the money or <laughs> yeah <laughs> so the game the game kind of solved it honestly in my opinion mm. Um, also, very interesting is the last point of it. In addition, the hiking has the authority to convert a portion portion of the taxes into gems for themselves each day. I like that. Sounds good. Yeah, of, of course you like that. <laughs> yeah, as the king. <laughs> yeah, yeah, free gems for you. I mean, I know who's taxing me to the behemoth. Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm gonna yeah. <laughs> uh, no. Um, I'm gonna save these gems so I can put uh. The watchtower on and uh, you know a ready shirt on twenty five. Yeah, just multiple defas. Oh, you don't have that already? Not on my second account, no. Ah, uh, I see this. Um. Yeah, but uh, that's very interesting. 
for sure, like always win, but I don't know, it's, it's also to me, um, it brings more life into the kingdom, in my opinion, like all these different yeah. things, um, where you have like, uh, different buffs and stuff like that, uh, especially these combat skills, gonna be so massive, and, and giving people the activity of, okay, I need to gave her now, I need to log in for the daily quest, so we get these taxes, so we can activate the combat skills and stuff like that. It's going to bring yeah. just more life into the kingdom, in my opinion. And I think it'll go back to your previous point, too, where it's like, instead of just being a alliance versus alliance, and sometimes we ally with other alliances, you know, it's now it's a kingdom, and all yeah. these kingdom buffs and these kingdom, like, accomplishments mean things, you know, it's no longer alliances. Like, you have alliances within the kingdom. And so I think that's just, like, the first step to actually kind of unite the communities and it's no longer alliance for alliance it's just straight kingdoms kind of like yeah. how rise game is <laughs> yeah um all right the last point the king's gift the high king can distribute a certain number of gift shares oh okay it's multiple shares okay here we have another... uh, i think that's a different thing from the exclusive chest uh you think so yeah, I think I actually think that the exclusive chest is what you're going to get for yourself and the king's gifts are what you can give other people. Oh, I get you. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Own the high king's exclusive avatar frame and nameplate. Receive a weekly refresh of Oh, wait. So Okay, okay. Yeah, it makes sense. I think it's like you're saying. So I getting myself basically an exclusive avatar frame and nameplate. Plus an exclusive shares every week. Yeah. So I think that's how it's gonna work. And since it's gonna okay. be like multiple gifts, like mm. to players, it shouldn't be that much uh that that difficult for you to decide who gets them. Yeah. Um. Well, gift shares every week. So if I remember in Rise of Kingdoms, how was it? Be I think we were having eight green shares. Four blue shares, two purple, and one legendary. Yeah, something like that. Most games ha follow a similar system. Mm, to we were players who have rendered a great service. For more details and rules, please refer to the relevant pages of the Hiking system. For more details and rules, please refer to the relevant pages of the Hiking system. Uh, okay, that's but, probably what's gonna like the eye thing that shows up when the system gets oh, deployed. Yeah, probably yeah, probably bad, yeah. Okay. Well that's that's pretty nice. That's pretty nice. So then we can easily do basically. When it's probably like this kind of system with one legendary, two purple, four blue and H uh, uh, green, then we can easily do like um the R four scaling and then the top players for contribution and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Especially like quiet weeks. If there's just like you just give it to the R fours or whoever's doing like a lot of work, and then we can come up with events. This. You can give it to like people doing work, not R fours, etc. Yeah. No, that's cool. So, so that's Darth cool. is gonna get a chest every time. I'm happy about that. You're getting. I thought you were gonna be king. every week. No, oh, Beast is not gonna let me be king. No, I wouldn't let you be king. <laughs> I'm gonna say king. <laughs> <laughs> no one get his king. <laughs> um, yeah, no, but that's cool. That's um, that's also giving exactly that what I also said, um, and many others said that the R fours and R fives. There's no way that they feel shared. Like all this work which they did right now into the game, there was nothing. Um, of a reward system or something for their contribution. No, nothing from the yeah. game, right? They, they did some updates in the part which have helped us, right? But, like, we can see the offline time and stuff like that, um, which it really helped us in managing their lines. But there was still the thing of, okay, I'm putting my free time into this, I'm putting my... Um, you know, my time, my resources, um, I sacrifice maybe my sleep, I sacrifice maybe, um, I don't know, um, 
seeing my friends or something because I need to be online now. Um, but I don't get something returned from the game. And now with this uh, system where we're getting these chests and stuff, it's it's basically something for us, right? Like I can, I, I getting something every week and I can give all the force something every week. And then um, probably some chests gonna stay, um, which I can give away to other players then. So it's it's yeah. very nice. It's um, yeah, it's very nice. I think it's good because as of right now, you basically have to wait till the end of the full season and our fours get a certain end of season rewards, which is like what, you know, a few hundred gems more than the rest. Yeah. That's nothing. That's 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 really I would nothing, trade yeah. my hundreds of hours of sleep I missed for <laughs> those hundred gems. <laughs> yeah, that's uh that's and dollars. Yeah. And dollars, yeah. Yeah, that's really not enough. Yeah, but overall, this um, sounds very good to me. Uh, I'm very hyped for this kind of home game and um, king system. Um, let me know in the comments, guys, what you think about that system. Let's jump to the next point, and that is seasons and other related adjustments. Except for season one, subsequent seasons will be shortened to 50 days. Pace will be faster and the battles will be more intense. And hey, yeah, I'm so happy. I don't know about you guys, but the seasons are way too long. Like way, way too long. Like over two months, like two to three months for one season. Holy shit, man. That's way too much in my opinion. So it's it's so good to see that we're going to go down to 50 days, basically one and a half months for one season. Which is fine for me. Like one month would be too fast. One and a half months is fine. Two months would be again too much in my opinion. Um, I think one and a half months is perfect in the middle. Not too too long. Not too short the season. You have enough time for battles. Um, but in between the battles when the next zones open. There will be not like two three weeks of time. So I don't know guys what you think. But I think that's a positive, um, positive thing. Yeah, I 100% agree. It's positive. I get extremely bored at the end. Uh, the beginning's boring as well, but you're just trying to pump through your heroes. You know, it'd be really nice yeah. if it was like, okay, all your heroes at 60 or reduced to 50, your 50 or reduced to 40, maybe. You know, like something where you weren't trying to grind. I mean, by the end of the season, you basically have your like five marches at 60. Like it's, I, I don't know. I don't really. It's hard to get everything to 60. It'd be really nice if you could just have, you know, all your marches max yeah, all the but... time. I would agree. And especially because if, like, you know, you start moving season to season, to season you're going to get more and bored, 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 bored. You're just going to get so bored just trying to level every time. Yeah. You only That's do it so much. Also. I mean, but the thing is that with a faster base, uh, we'll also have lower time to actually get through the behemoth uh, and a, a lower rest time. For example, like if you look at the zone 3 uh, and zone 4 wars that we have. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, yeah. Um, don't forget that the home beam have behemoths. You have your. Uh, basically, you have in your home beam your behemoths. Which you get the buffs from, and you probably can also summon them. And most likely in the home game, gonna be kind of either new behemoths, which you're gonna get, or the same behemoths with different buffs, or at no behemoths at all. But we have for but sure. It's a one time thing. What do you mean? So, like, if we kill the behemoths we get now in our home realm, that's uh, like after our season ends, uh, after that, we don't get more behemoths in the home kingdom it's set up it's yeah. over right yeah, that, yeah that's you're, so just, you're just min maxing your home kingdom to be like ready to yeah. go kvk so after that when you get into other seasons with lower uh, days uh you're like losing out on time uh in the sense that you're gonna have lo lesser time to you know kill the behemoths in that new season like for example uh, it took what LB and GB together like a week, not a, not a week, but like five days or something of trying the dragon, and they still couldn't get it. 
uh, like yeah. it's gonna be very troublesome for people to get through those behemoths because before they can even finish it, a new objective is now open. If they make behemoths easier or something, maybe that works. Uh, uh, and also like resource production. Will the maps be smaller? Will we get more time to build? And you also have the fact that Zone 3 and Zone 4 wars like we had, I basically slept only about 2 hours a day or 3 hours a day so that because, uh, because I'm R4 and because I have to be active during wartime. Now, if I have constant wars going on, it's and like I don't get... You're talking about 50 time. days of... <laughs> You know, potentially yeah, yeah. like oh. close to fifty days of just straight war, which is intense. Yeah, I mean, we basically now like GBLB and uh, HH, we fought for a good month, I would say. Yeah, yeah, and but it's so easy to we, say too. Yeah. In the end, of, like end of season right now, right? It's like, oh, it's so chill, it's too easy, too relaxed, and then you get into it for you're on you know, the end of the first week of the war and you're still, like, not even close to being done. You're like, man, I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, and if, if it went the, for that if, for 40 days straight, you know, who, who knows? Yeah. So, I mean, I kind of find 50 days do less, but you know, it depends on how much people are putting in their time. Well, in my opinion, I think you should... Reduce I mean, the time it takes to level your heroes, right? Like, I get, hey, if we go we reduce it down 10 levels, maybe, or just not reduce them at all. Just, hey, you max your hero, you max your hero. And then cut, cut the front end and the back end. The The middle of the season is, in my opinion, semi-fine. Like, right? Like, you get a general, like, you might have a week of war or a couple of days, and it ends, and then you might have a week of, like, downtime, get some behemoths. And they might go back to war, but like you start just cutting it all down. Yeah. And, and like, you have to level heroes. If, if it's like 50 days, so what part of the season do they shorten, right? That is also a thing that we have to consider. Probably because the they end. can't just. Yeah, think, so if they're the shortening the end, uh, I think the basically... end should be short. Yeah, so if, if the end is short, we had a two week war with LB and GB where. Mm-hmm. That if that is shortened, HH might not even have one. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, true. Yeah, you wouldn't have time to go back and like cover the behemoths you didn't get. I mean, yeah. But I then get you get the, the middle. You, saying, you get the beginning, right? Hold on. You wouldn't hold on, get. Hold on. I get to the point what you're saying, but don't forget that the August zone also moves then faster, right? So that means that the R and the other people could have joined us earlier, um, and then you know help us winning, right? Um, I get the point what you're saying, but um, they're saying in the next point, in subsequent season, the season progress in August will be adjusted to match the 50-day land. For right now, we have, for example, for the dragon, right? The dragon August was five days. Like, five yeah. days for one August on, it's way too long, right? So, um, I think, like, stuff like that, but probably, for example, getting reduced to three days, and then other stuff is only one day when it's really only need to be one day. Like, for example, killing forts. Like, you don't need two days for killing 20 forts. Like, for, for what yeah. do you have two days, right? So, stuff like that yeah. going to be probably shortened overall. So, they made uh, the season overall shortened. Um, to the I point agree. of the hero levels, it's going to stay um, with every season you need to start from level 30. Um, right now, they said it also in the video. Um, and yeah, um, I guess we just need to see overall how these things gonna work out, right? If uh, if they making the behemoths easier or not. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's 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 all fresh and new and we all need to find it out first in my opinion right. the next point affiliate region will be assigned by the system of reins as a unit players cannot choose their own affiliate region and it cannot be changed during the season which is awesome i love it i mean i have already loved the point before where people cannot change anymore mid-season and only at the beginning and the end the end um not because of people like betraying or something but of of the point of not like changing the, the, the power like it for me it for i don't care if people leaving or joining right like everyone can go their own way 
Like, um, if you want to join that team and you think it's the correct team, then go for it. I wish you good luck. Um, but what I have hated before that people could have switched mid-season was always the point of that changed the power balance, in my opinion, right? Like, I was want to have fair seasons and want to enjoy fighting. Um, and if people can switch mid-seasons, that's just ass, basically. Like, that's just switching the power um, of the alliances of the teams, which I don't like at all. So it's um, after that to change when that people cannot change mid-season the teams anymore, only at the beginning and the end. It was already better, in my opinion. And now they can't do that at all anymore in the season. They need to wait until the season's ending. And there we're coming also back to the point of shortening the season is also good because of a migration aspect. Um, but you have your home realm affiliate region where only your kingdom can go. So bas that means right now you could just stack up in one zone, right? Like we could get go uh, go into next season, and I don't know, let's say um, TDA from 1080, uh, they all join in our uh, in our affiliate region as well, right? And then we have HH TDA SH. We have together 13, 14 billion power in one zone. Right, that is massive stacking, which I also don't like. So having these affiliate region for your kingdom makes it also again, in my opinion, way more balanced at all. But what do you guys think? I mean, to me, I mean, it just sounds like it's it's another server based thing, right? So affiliate regions will be assigned by the system with realms as a unit. So your realm is your kingdom, which is also known as your server. Yeah. So our server will be our own realm. And as soon as you go into KVK, it's not up to the individual to just pick some random thing like, hey, I'm going to be in this realm or this zone, you know, because he's not in an alliance. It's just going to be that entire server will be in that realm. So there's no longer like, oh, well, this alliance doesn't really agree with this alliance. So they're going to move to this zone. Um, it's just going to be the entire server. The entire server will be the zone. So there's no longer, it's just based on, it's going to be server per zone, basically, is what I think it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you look at it in a different sense, uh, if you're locking, how is the system going to be, uh, like, are servers able to pick the, their affiliated zone? And if no. yes, what is the... Yeah, so if they're not able to pick, if it's assigned then randomly, are the maps... Uh, what it says, you know, affiliated regions will be assigned by the systems with realms as the unit. So it's going to be the unit being the realm, which is your server, will be assigned by the system. So the system will legitimately pick each server's starting area. Yeah, so, yeah. so if you look at our current Season 2 map, Inogad as well, a region... Was, but that was all uh, picked by the alliances. The alliances picked the starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but the, uh, now I'm assuming it's that system the map boost. is going. I'm assuming that the map is going to be the same, right? So the starting regions, uh, even if the server picks it for, I mean, if if the system picks it for you, you might end up in a region that might be uh, tactically uh, disadvantageous to you for the final zone, so like how Enogad was. For what are they gonna do? What are they gonna do? They're gonna put all the top servers on the top and all the bottom on the bottom, or are they gonna alternate? Like it's probably gonna be like a bracket style, in my opinion, where it's like a strong server, weak server, strong server, weak server, and it's like you could potentially be that weak server in the middle of two strong servers, and you just had poor diplo and just got crushed from both sides. Yeah, like, so yeah. so I think it's very disadvantageous to like lock it. Uh, I mean to assign uh, affiliated regions. Uh, I think it should be up to the alliances and their uh, strategy to be able to pick it. This reduces another part of, you know, war strategy, uh, which is kind of bad. Yeah, I mean, because it. It's just one of those I, things, though. Yeah. They're moving from. You're thinking from. The, the old thing, which is alliance versus alliance versus alliance versus alliance. Yeah. It's it's now going to kingdom versus kingdom versus kingdom. So it's like one alliance can't just 
move to another server's region, right? Yeah, yeah. but but like um, think of it like if like SH think of SH were right able now. to go. Well, think of SH. Think of... Say they were yeah. like, hey, fuck it, fuck HH. I actually want to be aligned with I don't know. I'm assuming KOR or something, and they just want to move to that side. They would just move to that side. Well, this is now locking our server into one region. And I'm pretty sure that's as simple as that. I'm pretty sure it's just saying our server will be in one region. There's no moving out of it. It's you're I mean, when you're in that SH, server, you're there. If they were to like betray us, um Well it's not like betraying. If, what I'm saying is like No, yeah, if it, they want it all like, goes with wanna... the thing. But the thing is that if... people can now use passports to migrate out. So it's on the individual. If they want to move out, they can move to another alliance. There's cross server migration now. So yeah, exactly. So so then it's the, not just the wait till end of season, pay five thousand gems. Of, yeah, go on. The the realm thing just like restricts people. Uh I mean the affiliated region, sorry, it restricts people now. And that's kind of also bad because if you're stuck in a tough situation, you now have to wait fifty days before you can actually uh, get yourself into a good alliance or like or you'll just be stuck in an inactive shithole pretty Sorry. much and that's how red schemes was, yeah so. but i mean legitimate. it's <laughs> it's the responsibility of a kingdom you know to form good alliances right like if your kingdom like if your leader of a kingdom don't know how to do that then you should see that and then switch um, as soon as possible the, the server, right? Like that's the um, that's the idea of it. The whole the whole thing of this here right now is just to balance the game. Simple as that, right? The the um, affiliate region that you can't pick them by yourself anymore to balance the system. Um, they're gonna um, that's how they did also in Rise of King. They have made it always kind of fair. So for example, in the top left was one really strong server and then on the bottom right was really once uh was one really strong server and then they have matched up basically um Aether in zone three or in the last zone so in rise of kingdoms the system was always kind of making it fair when it comes to the um starting ground for the servers um so i think it's gonna be kind of like that um I I just forgot What's what I now? said to the last oh, wait, point. No. I know wait, what wait. we talked about uh, the home beam stuff and uh, so go the just region. Above two, I think. I was following along, or I lost a little bit, and then I found it, and then I was following along. I guess we just go to the next point. Um, I think, or do you guys want to say something else with the regions? Uh, hold on. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Uh, we were at three... affiliated regions. Seasons, seasons and other season related justices. Yeah. Yep. And then the feed we, region. We but... spoke about uh the, how many uh, how many dashes alliance. down? We. We uh three yeah. Affiliate regions right? Yeah. That's kind of we left off on. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think we said everything. Oh wait, I, I remember where what um I wanted to say that um yeah it's it's more balanced in um with matchmaking yeah. right you have kingdoms now. Um but uh I, I get the point of what you're saying with war strategy uh, stuff, but at the at the same moment is it not like also kinda exciting to see what region you get and what kind of strategy you need to use then because right at every region every starting region requires a little bit of a different strategy right so i think instead of just going straight for the best zone because everyone doing it and everyone doing the same strat from this zone i think it's more yeah more more exciting to see what zone you're getting and based on that you have then a different kind of strategy in my opinion yeah, because no one can plan ahead too much, you know. It's uh, yeah, you kind of just have to like figure out on the spot. Everyone starts in the same like starting area, basically. Yeah. Okay, these guys on my right, these on my left. Okay, we're going right or we're going left. We're doing this exactly. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, yeah, but uh, my only point was that it's not balanced anymore, uh, and you don't have autonomy of choice. It's it was not well, balanced be before balanced. anyway. Random. Now it's more balanced than before because before, like I said, you everyone could just no, stack up in one zone. It was a choice before. No, it was because a choice. no, so like now, before, it was basically like your server group just kept moving to the next one, the next one, the next one. Now it's going to be like these specific powers are going to be more aligned. So it might be like, you know, us, what, 1093, or no, uh, 1090. 83. I thought it was 1083. 1080. 1080, 1081, 1082. Yeah, yeah, 80, no, that's, that's server groups. I'm talking about like actual, sorry, 1293, my bad. 1293, oh, oh. 1290, like it's gonna actually take the the matching power servers, match them together. It's gonna match the lower power servers, match them together, and then the migration is gonna allow those like skeleton servers, like like I said, to look at nine six, right? They just basically lost fifty percent or more of the power coming here. That's now a skeleton server that now opens up the realm for like they can now just kind of welcome like these groups of people who play in like 10 15 people They're like hey we all want to migrate somewhere cool we're open boom they all migrate another 10 mm. 15 people another 20 people like hey a full alliance wants to come over maybe 50 people like boom they could just start stacking their server with like the active mm. of the active you know and it kind of allows them to like get back in the fight because as of right now if you were to just like keep going and 96 would just keep going server to server or season to season they would just get, they would just, they're already gone, right? Like it's, it, it would be unfair. So this style allows that to happen. Like I said, I only have one thing, dude. It's the passports. It's the fucking paying a thousand dollars because you're a T5 just to migrate. It's like, bro, fuck that. Yeah. I mean, I'll do it. If it makes sense, you start doing it more than once. Like I said, I did it in Rise of Kingdoms. Twice I did it. A third time I was like, "Nah, bro, this is t this is the time to get out." <laughs> yeah, no, we so. we gonna stay in two ninety three, bro. Two ninety three is our kingdom. Yeah, you and that's why I came here, dude. I was like, "You guys fucking stuck it out and won." Not in that, not just the one, but like, if I, if GB would have literally fought to the end, and I would have been like, "Yeah, you guys did it right," I would have stayed with them. Yeah, straight up. But they didn't. They fucking quit. That's why I left. So. I'm assuming this is going to be the trend with this server. Yeah, right. That's that's a common thing of new servers, right? Like people have no idea of. If uh, first of all, it begins with a problem of season one, and people have no idea how to fucking lead. Then it comes to a problem that who's who are kind of leading don't know how to win a war and how to do war attrition and stuff like that. And that re it comes back to the point of. People are getting tired and the active people are like gonna leave then and you know and like what what happened to um two ninety six and half of the people who were active fighting joining the the server who they saw were really fighting and having good um leadership and stuff. And the rest of the people who staying were either because they hate us so much or they are just not active at all and don't care. Right? That's yeah, a that's exactly. a trend of new servers. It's yeah, always like that. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, if you looked at the end, it was like, bro, it was me and Andong with like 4 million plus merits. The next guy would be like 3 million or 300,000. You know, it was like yeah. a single statue fight. And then the rest, the next 20 would be like, okay, you might have done an hour or two of a week. <laughs> and then after that, it was like, you did a basic, uh five minutes of fighting and then left. Like, it, it was fucking bad, dude. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you're coming back to the region, right, with um, that the system selecting you, we can just look on our current season, right? We were we were having um, ourselves and AB in the middle were basically two strongest um, alliances. Um, and then GB and on the other side, DR, which were the weaker side. And um, GB were becoming over time because of also of the merge um, stronger and catching up in power. But um, that's basically how you can see it, right? How it's probably going to happen. But Aether 
uh, the stronger server is going to fight from the start or they're going to be completely on the other side of a map and so they're matching at the last zones together and the weaker servers are in the middle um, and can fight against each other. So, uh, that's probably how it's going to happen in my opinion. Um, but here again, we need to see we have obviously no direct information of how the system works. It's just all speculation. So yeah, um, we will see how that will work when it really comes out. Yeah, I think ideally they need to have some new maps, especially if you're going to fit that style in, you know, like, or something. They need to have like a map to float in there. If there's like, hey, we got four strong servers, two weak servers. How do we kind of not let these two weak servers just get gang raped by two sides of the strongest servers? Yeah. Like, yeah. And they, they exactly. should actually, they might also should allow, like they should remove the semi-protected thing to an extent because, you know, uh, you, you really want to have more strategy. If you're yeah, just it's locked just... in. It just channels you to the fucking center, and it's like, okay, cool. Now you're in a two week long war at a goddamn choke point. Like that's. I stupid. mean, yeah, yeah. The semi. I would have loved dude. to have every other opportunity to move over, or something. Oh, there's yeah, probably was. just do something instead of just sit and not uh, be able to, you know, uh, like how we were sitting at the choke point for like, w uh, like a couple weeks, and it was just kind of lame because there's no way we get up. There's no alternative route because we can't go from the past four into GB there mm. to cut off their territory. And you're just like sort of stuck there. And with the fact that you can't pick your own region anymore, uh, there's a high chance that certain alliances are never going to be able to even make it to the dragon. Not anymore, well, because I um I can tell you that the current season B1 map, uh, season um, um, Bellow map, map, which you have played, it's not anymore because yeah. if you check right now on the new season two maps, they change. They yeah. are new. And especially also in the last zone, you have more ways open. You have different ways for the dragon. Um, it was just unlucky that we, I think we were the second last one playing on this map. Um, yeah. Um, that we were having that. But in the future, you will see it in Tamara's uh, map, in the, in the new B1 map. Um, we have their alternative routes for going um, for the dragon, right? Also, also not forget too. It's like this thing's going back to Rise of Kingdoms. Like Rise of Kingdoms, it wasn't. Hey, this alliance across the map allies with this alliance. No, it's this server alliances with this server. Yeah, and then that like two servers are now allied, right? So it was like multiple alliances of servers all fighting the center. And then now we're not just going from Union, right? So Union was just one alliance, one alliance. Now we're going to war bands. So that's something you come. The look, shit the is, is, it's coming. Everything is, oh. a, yeah, it's all coming into play. Like it, everything is, all these things are happening because you can tell what's happening. It's because it's trying to go to this King vs. King thing. It's going to get you out of that mindset of like, hey, I'm in this alliance and I want to be a lot. I don't want to be allied with this alliance or whatever, right? It's yes. Now you're in a it's... server. So if say us and SH, like SH and us hate like hate each other, or we could be like nine six and LB and crack and hate each other, right? Well, if that fucking whole lines want to migrate out, they could do it now. They could just straight as a group migrate the fuck out, get out of this kingdom. That creates a big gap. And now we can get another whole alliance or all these people that migrate into us. So it's like, that's where everything starts to fall into play. Like it's, it takes time, but it's, I don't think it's going to be like the end of season. Now you, now is your migration period back then. I'm, I mean, this is 2018, 2019 when I played rock, but it was, I'm pretty sure you could just kind of migrate if I remember, or maybe it had to be end of C KBK. Yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, you mean like uh, migrating mid-season or something? I I think there was like a there was a stipulation. I think like okay, I can migrate to that kingdom, but I I was stuck in their home realm or something. Like yeah, I I, I, I remember like also something like ago. that. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember like also just five years like ago. 
Yeah, so, so basically, uh, yeah, like you said, it's now kingdom versus kingdom, and with it, if he region, everyone knows by themselves, okay, this kingdom is where, this kingdom is where, these kingdoms are together, we're gonna fight against each, and it's overall less complicated and lo less, um, like, how to say it correctly, um, it's more in a better overview perspective, right? It's more yeah. clear who is against who, and it's not like all these stupid alliances across the fucking map, who are maybe allied or not, right? Which maybe yeah, was in a in a kind of way of funny because there was like always like funny uh, fighting going on or something. But now it's very clear you're starting in this realm, uh, and with that server in that affiliate region, you're going forward. Either you are allied with a uh, kingdom next to you or uh, or not, and that's it, right? It's it's less complicated. And then with the warband thing, you can now teleport to your like sister alliances. So it's like every alliance within your kingdom, you can just teleport onto them and help with the war. It's no longer just like, oh, it's just me and my sister alliance. To that, I can't help you. Yeah, I don't so know, you if, know... If, if you remember in Rise of Kingdoms, you could get zeroed if you were teleporting on um, in other alliances. Oh, teleport. you might be able to. I don't know if it's oh, going to be that way. I, I actually would prefer if it's that way. If uh you know sort of restricts weaker players to do that uh yeah you know like you have to be online you know uh like be online attack whatever and then teleport out of there or shield to be safe like adding an extra condition to it would uh make people less reckless yeah like let's say sh was like fighting a war against an equal opponent right or something yeah. right and then like I teleported in, right? Just like tip the balance completely. Well, their counter to that could just be launching a big ass rally on me, and now everyone's like, "Oh fuck, what do we do?" Like, ah, and then my reaction could be like, "Well, I can take it or leave," you know, or something, right? Like, I don't know. It could be, who, who knows? Yeah, it just opens more strategies. Maybe yeah. what it is. It could be All right. Um. One. And so uh, let's jump to the next point. So we talked now a lot about the field region. I mean, it's also it was a big topic to talk about. Um, I think we the next stuff we can skip after season one ends. Players can only create alliance in the home realm. Create alliance uh, will automatically be affiliated to, to the realm. Players can only join alliances in the same realm as themselves. Yeah, it's pretty sim like pretty obviously what it's saying. Um. So nothing to talk about there. All alliance and data in the home realm will be retained permanently. Behemoth buffs and alliance member bonuses obtained in the home realm will also be affected in subsequent seasons. Here also again a side note, they said in the video that, it, that the limit stays to 200. So it's basically gonna be like we have right now 200 members joining the new server and that's it. Alliance resources the and the alliance point. buildings. Will be counted separately. Wait, if... did you skip through this? What? Uh, Alliance oh. can only summon behemoths occupied on the current uh, continent, and behemoths in season servers will no longer provide Alliance member bonuses. Like, big point. Oh, yeah, true. Uh, I skipped that. Wait, Alliance can only summon behemoths occupied on the current that continent. That was the next one. Wait, hold on. On the current continent. Are that the, the, the different regions? No, no, what it's saying is that you can you can gather all the behemoths from your home realm, right? Like, you can have everything, the dragon, everything down, but you can't just mm. go into zone one fighting, dropping a oh. dragon. So oh, it needs yeah, to be okay. in that KVK, whatever you actually own, you could drop. That's all it's saying. Okay. No, okay. No. I mean, it, it also says that behemoths in season servers will no longer provide alliance member all oh, like member limit M yeah, yeah. Uh, bonuses uh, oh okay okay i i thought it meant like uh the actual that's like basically gone to the member. no 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 yeah, so the buff, member limit. yeah yeah because you're gonna get that new season bonus anyways or like plus 100 whatever it is so you're just yeah. gonna be everyone's gonna be capped at 200 they already said it every season doesn't matter what it is every alliance will be 200 members yeah. yeah. Even also, season one? Uh, yeah. It's onward. always 200. I don't know about season one, but yeah, onward. Okay. The, the max is 200. Yeah, so that that's going to be a change for season one then. 
Yeah, probably. But um, they also said that we'll go into season one from here with our same alliance, everything. So, yeah, who knows? We will see. Yeah, true. It's, it's a lot of questions. We caught, they also said at the beginning, after the end of season one, this land will be preserved as a home win. So maybe you have your season one. Then this land, like with a current season one, which is completely normal with alliance member limits and stuff like that. And then after this ends, you have basically how you have built it with the Tamaris map. It's basically your home game then. And then it's going to change basically from season one map to the home kingdom map. Maybe like that. But that would yeah. be also a thing I could yeah. think about. I just have a feeling we're going to drop onto like a blank slate season one map with exactly our season. Like whoever migrates to us, the entire 9 3, we're just going to drop in a blank slate. And we're gonna figure it out, and we yeah. can assign alliances, their own regions, their own behemoths, and it's gonna be a straight min maxing behemoth buffs all the way to the dragon, because that's what's gonna carry on to the KVK, and we have thirty days to do that, and that's yeah. pretty much what I envision everything to be. Yeah. Also important is that aligned resources and aligned wins will be counted separately. Uh, separately in home game and season servers. So basically, you starting with low cost on the new season. So, yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, you can't just like be yeah. max resources starting KVK. Yeah, pop into KVK, max resources, and start building. Like, yeah. I mean, even if you were sense. to start with max resources, it's the same thing. Uh, well, no, because you would just get, you know. I, X amount of towers ahead of another lines. Like it, end it's game, still balanced, it might not make much, but yeah. It, it's balanced though, right? Because if you have it, so does the other server. So it that really doesn't matter if you start with the same yeah. resources. Well, or no, because it would be, say you were, in, you were in your home realm, right? And you're like trying to min max everything. And last second, you're like, oh, we can do this. We can build over here. And you built five towers. And then now you start the KVK with no resources, but then the other lines next to you has max resources and builds five towers faster than you. Like, well, that's really a you. Could it create an edge? Maybe, maybe uh, not. I don't know. But... Yeah, I get your point, but then it would be also the fault from the lines, to be honest. Like, yeah, like they should be prepared for that. It's not like the KVK showed up randomly out of nowhere. They knew it was coming. Yeah, but it, it, at the end of the day, it just starts everyone on the same playing field. You do KVK, hey, you got your alliance buffs? You, did you finish? No? Okay, cool. Everyone's starting exactly the same resources, zero KVK, and moving on. So if yeah. that alliance didn't meet that last bear or whatever it was, like a random behemoth that they wanted, well, that's on mm -hmm. them. But, you know, the next... At, you start KVK, now everyone's actually starting on the actual same playing field. But, minus the behemoths, they didn't get. Because, hence, I think it's going to be a min-max fight in this 30 days. Yeah. I mean, at the end, it doesn't matter, right? Like, it's uh, everyone's out in a separated zone 1, so we can't fight in zone 1 anyway, so... Yeah. Um... The next point: the Alliance Merit Store will be cl will close twenty two hours, as uh, seventy two hours after seamless completion of season one. Season progress is achieved. It will reopen at the start of the next season. Will reopen. Merit Store will be moved from the Alliance page to the season event page. Okay, cool. Um, the oh, so we're gonna have a different page. Uh, yeah, we, 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 it, they showed it in the video. You have like a season event page yeah. where we have a timeline and um, season uh, quests for rewards and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, adjustment to Warpad skill card pad changes. Change in season V1 pad exchange only count the market value within the current server. Oh, okay. Oh. In subsequent seasons, pet exchange data will be shared between servers of the same season, and pet exchange data of reams in preparation for better will be shared with a server of a season we're preparing for. That oh. makes sense because I actually have mm. a season one account right now, and I can sell and buy the same things for the same price. So, 
Yeah. Yeah. Or it also means that they're gonna change, like, for example, if a particular skill is more uh, wanted on your server, it's gonna cost more. Basically, yeah, basically yeah. just you know, I mean the the meta is gonna cost more, and then yeah, I mean it, it, as a server we can also manipulate the cost then. Yeah, kind of. Be... You could, yeah, for sure. I think it's gonna be interesting to see how that will work out. Yeah. yeah. Um. We to this. home. Reading. All right. Sell this. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we become Wall Street. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Um, what is that? Thing? When the home healing system is released, servers in season two and beyond will not be affected by the changes during the current season. Players will return to their respective home games after the current scene ends. Upon returning to home game for the first time, the following changes will occur to alliance as a basically for us. The alliance itself will be preserved and the alliance will be located in the leader's home game. Current alliance tech for progress will be preserved. Current alliance gap will be preserved. Current alliance resource will be preserved. Wait, hold on. That means... Does it not mean that we're keeping also our alliance gift level? No, no, yeah. it means it, it's basically saying that what we have right now, we're going to be transported to a blank slate realm. And then our whole realm, like Alliance tech level, everything's preserved. Our gifts, so we'll be still Alliance tech level 50 or gift level 50, everything maxed. And I'm pretty sure, because I've already read through this, it's we're just going to be building flags like legitimately min maxing our home realm because that's what's preparing us for the next kvk yeah and it's giving and it's giving oh. everybody who is now past season one right now that same opportunity because season one from here on out will have that opportunity season one will finish their season one and then move on with their home realm their home realm just like rise camps we need it's, to get the sh's gift level up but we, we, we do that if that's on, the thing. You know? I mean, I guess it'll happen eventually, but it's like, yeah, I, I just think it's, yeah, it, our alliance is going to stay the same now. So we're not going to reset. We're not going to go back to our home realm, have to reset everything, tech, while also trying to build, trying to get to all these different behemoths we're trying to do. Because we got to fill the entire map with our own kingdom. So now we have to actually think of yeah. each alliance. So. HH, SH, MH, FH, whatever else is in the kingdom, and we have to fill the map. Yeah. Well, and with the resources point, the current alliance resources will be preserved. Does that mean, like, if we gather like a 1.5 mil of our storehouse, we get that? Yeah. Or does it also mean that we get the production? No, no, that, no, no, production not, uh, but I guess the storage it will be preserved. I, I would, yeah, I would assume storage. Not the production. because the, we yeah, yeah. we the map is resetting right like the current map which uh, which we are on that will reset so the alliance building is gonna get yeah. um yeah. reset it um 1. but 5. since the alliance will I think like the alliance close to hundred flags then it's just taking our alliance progress so far moving it to a new blank slate and be like go nah, that's basically what it is and then it's up yeah. to the kingdom the king the kingdom to figure out okay this alliance goes here this alliance goes here because we got a whole map to basically spread out right so we can just like i said it's just like browser kingdoms where they want to have like your full map has multiple alliances and they're all spread out they all have territory they're all like very very developed over five kvks and plus you know it's so that's where they're trying to go for i think yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll just keep doing that. You know, every KVK, we'll just slowly kind of develop our own map to be like, this is exactly how we want it. Boom, we're done. Um, The current line simple member bonus will be preserved and will last for one month. Okay. All members have the same home room as the leader will remain in the alliance. All members who do not have the same room as the leader will be removed from the alliance. 
uh, yeah, basically like the um, if you're jumping into new server, everyone who's not in the yeah. uh, in the server which you are in the alliance, um, and you are yeah, you get just getting removed basically. So nothing new there. Alliance territories and related buildings on the season server will be cleared. Alliance occupation information on the season server will be cleared, including behemoth station and villages. Everything clear. Um, based on the above changes, we would like to remind all players, if you want to return to the same William as your Alliance members, please be sure to migrate to the server where the leader is located during the last migration at the end of current season. There we have it again. We have one last virtual migration. Um, so, yeah. Make sh uh, let's make sure that everyone comes in. Um, it, since it's also only cost 5k. 5k gems. So, yeah. <laughs> now or yeah. never. Wait. This is the last <laughs> last opportunity for a really cheap... Because like I said yeah. earlier, it could be $770. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> by the looks of it, it seems like we will be able to get at least two alliance worth of people in. So, I think migration should go smoothly for HH. Uh, yeah, we, for sure. we should be at least telling everyone, hey, have a fucking reserve of 5k gems, especially if you're just coming here. Oh, we, yeah. oh, we did it, yeah. Yeah. Um, keep reminding, keep reminding them though, as it comes. Okay. Yeah. You know, people well, still spend. That's for the home beam. The following changes will be made to the other systems in the home beam. Starting area, players will be randomly relocated to any location within the their affiliate region. Season progress. All season progress will be marked as completed and rewards will be marked as claimed. Behemoths and stages. All behemoths and stages will become open and first key rewards will be refreshed. Oh. oh so we good. can Oh that's nice. Some some more rewards yeah. for us. Exploration all mist oh, so... will be displayed. All villages, cases, camps, and other exploration content will be marked as claimed and season stories will be marked as completed. Okay, that's, nice. that's... okay. <laughs> you don't have thirty uh, days to just go oh, explore the entire map again. Oh no, not again, please. <laughs> oh, terrible. Yeah. All right, cool. So we do, we just need to do all the behemoths and building, and that's it. That's nice. It's also yeah. the question yeah. of what I have. Are the frames resetting? Can you get another uh, time the frames? I mean, it says behemoths. I mean... Bro, why would you want to get it again? Well, people don't have it. There's plenty of people don't have oh, it. Oh, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wait. Like, that would be a question which I have right now. If you're getting the first key rewards again from Behemoths, is it possible that you can also get the frame? I mean... That would be a... really nice, especially Season yeah. 1. Uh, uh, Behemoths were, like, very easy, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, will, those, will Season 1 be, like, level 20... Darklings, you know, or where they would be like level 35 or 36, whatever they are. Oh, that's also plus, a good point. Like, you know, is it going to be like, oh man, I'm grinding on these weak Darklings it's probably, at 25? Yeah, it's probably going to be 25, like in Wizard Kingdoms. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be like our season two levels migrate over there. I'm hoping, at least. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I guess we will see. <laughs> come on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, let me cry a darkling for it. Oh god. That's yeah. also a good point. Uh, does uh, d does your CP uh, like behave differently while you're in the home kingdom versus when you're in the new season? No, because you have your tech. And then no, tech, you'll be, you'll be also, in, but it's your tech also, minus your uh, policies. So we'll yeah, but it doesn't mention anything season, about policies. We'll get policies. But in the home kingdom, are we still gonna get effects from the policies? Oh, that's if we get policies. Maybe we're getting like a home win policy. Yeah, it doesn't say anything. So with some buff, so, I don't know. Yeah. So so but, then your CP regeneration in the perfect. new season should be higher if the policy is included or something. You know, like we yeah, have. But it doesn't also mention anything about like hero reset. So. Do you want to grind out your home season just to go to the new KVK back to level 30? Yeah, and or... do you come back to your home kingdom with level 30 heroes or level 60 heroes? Yeah, those are all just more questions. Yeah, a lot of questions which are getting hopefully answered next uh, next week. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, What can we skip that or is that something which we need to cover? I think that move a route of prosperity internal affairs system adjustment signaling 
significantly increase the internal affairs point yield in all seasons and significantly reduce the time required to enact policies. Okay, so probably, yeah, I don't know, less time overall, just you can do just more policies in less time. Awesome. Um, internal affair points. Are that the, the points which you need for enacting policies? That's how it's called? Uh, checking with. Uh, it's called prestige. So wait, uh, so is that a new name? For I don't that, know or? what. Uh, yeah, uh, that's new. So I have no idea what that is, guys. Maybe someone of you knows that and can uh, comment that under the video. What that is exactly? Um, otherwise, these other changes. Yeah, just a fix an error, optimize the text description. Edit adjusted the purchase limit for Warpad skill cards and pad exchange. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, some some new uh, some nice changes. Um, let's go down to more of what we're looking here for. And even which are combat experience. The first point. Added legion control options. I don't know um how exactly that's gonna work, guys. Um since we have already these control options for the PC. So we need to see exactly how they mean that. Because right now it is already easy, right? You press CTRL plus I don't know the number which you have made the group with. Um so I don't exactly know how they want to maybe they just make it easier to show or something. I don't know. Really yeah, I kinda wanted that too when I read that. Edit a direct le legion target. Maybe for feature. mobile. Maybe it's a mobile Maybe. update too. Maybe. Players can preview. Yeah, yeah. I mean, these these legion target selection things, you can see when it comes out, uh, how they mean that exactly. Optimize preset legion for safe function. Optimize artifact war and warpad switching during legion creation. Okay, cool. I mean, that stuff, yeah, optimizing. I mean, these stuff, guys, if you want to really read that, you can um, drop the video, but that's not something which we there, really want there to do. There is a lot about. of good, there is a lot of I good mean, uh, well, optimization up there. There's some yeah. new things. You got the Warfog, you got like some crazy new updates coming out. I don't know if it's going to affect one, our next Kingdom, but yeah. One particular thing about like preset functions that would be interesting was if you could save your preset functions where your artifacts on your heroes could be different from what you have equipped at the moment, you know? Exactly, yeah. Mm. That, and I'm hoping that's what it is because, yeah, yeah, if you can have a different artifact, different pet, you know, whatever it is, you're, different you're, that combination like, is saved. Yeah. 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 Um, also like, for example, I want to run my, uh, you know, like I want to run my Bokshi with Kingslayer or Springblades. But I want to run Embrys with Blink Dagger, because, uh, whatever that thing is, uh, Storm Arrows, because, uh, you, you know, for different kinds of skill sets. Uh, but sometimes you want to switch your artifacts around. Yeah, and then it's annoying if you need to do it by yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be, would be very nice if it's like that. Um, also, what is really good is that Elixir, I don't know if you, uh, you probably know what I mean. Uh, if you have used Elixir and it says the system, oh, if you're using now the potion, you're losing like 5k because you're over the limit and stuff like that. Now it's not anymore like you're going over the storage limit at, uh, at once, making control easier when healing a large number of legions. So yeah, that's also pretty nice. And then fish you, you can go and... over the limit now? Yeah. You can go over the limit now, how I read it here. Okay. Nice. Um, then we have a point of personal bidding view feature. Maybe you guys know exactly what that means. It's probably just where bidding right now is and people can just directly jump to it to see it. Or which is that how it means. Personal bidding view feature. Sounds like that. Yeah, it sounds like the, for something for the strategic map. When oh, you scroll out, and then you have it, on the left it, side these different views, right? Maybe. Oh, uh, I think it's more like, uh, you know, like how if we have uh, uh, barricades out, and you you don't exactly know where your barricades. Oh, are. you mean that? 
or white, yeah. white. You can see the too, and so oh, it they, actually like pops up more obvious. Like, okay, I have very clear there. Yeah, that 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 yeah. would be nice if it it would mean like that. Yeah, that's that's nice. That's nice. Um, but now we're coming to the points of an improved alliance system. Now we're coming to the second part of the update mail, which is very interesting. Why right? you um we have talked about that earlier, right? The union system upgrade, the warband system. Starting from season two, the warband system will replace the current union system. The main features include alliances located in the same field region can establish a warband. Warman members can provide mutual alliance help and also relocate to the territory of other warband members. Warband members share behemoth buffs, does not affect behemoth summoning privileges. Um, that's probably for the current season you're in, right? Since you probably don't have a warband within your home kingdom. Um, warbands can choose and set a unique territory color and the territories of all members will be displayed in this color. When the warband system is released, servers in season 2 and beyond will not be affected by the changes during the current season. The union system will be upgraded to the warband system after the current season ends. Okay, okay. Yeah, so, I mean, um, everyone who have played Rise of Kingdoms knows that, what that means. Um, you probably can stack up up to 4 or 5 alliances in that warband and fighting together on the field. Which having first of all benefits, right? The warband um also giving you the option of helping alliance members, right? So you not only you share behemoth buff, but also you helping each other with sending actual helps to the to the other alliance, um, and you have more alliances in this warband for fighting together, most likely. So I think that's a good change. Um, that's how it should have been all the time, like it was in the beta where you call, could have uh, make a union up to three alliances. Um, I don't know, it was like one alliance. But here we're coming again back to the point of it was alliances versus alliances all the time, right? It was not kingdom versus kingdom. Now with a change of it's going to be more kingdom based, that warband system is really needed, in my opinion. Yeah, because we... from what I heard was that the that system was a little overpowered in the originally, right? When you had alliance versus alliance, but then you had those certain alliances that were actually like coordinated and they would just warband together, you know, three alliances basically teleporting together and just demolishing single alliances. Now yeah. this makes more sense. So warband? it was nerfed originally. Now I feel like making the the resurgence might be a good play. The the warband does it allow for you to have more than two alliances? Yes, probably. Yeah. I yeah. think it's so four. I thought it was up to four or something. Or if or... it's like that, I think then what the general strategy would be like. For example, we have three or four. Uh, no, we have three, right? Three uh, uh, frost giants in this season. So then, you know, three different alliances can now be able to summon Frost Giant and still share the buff, so that's, like, very nice. Yeah. But if, it makes easier. Yeah, that would be overpowered. Now, yeah, stacking four alliances, Behemoths, onto one tower, Yeah. or is it just that single alliance's tower that is only allowed to have that, or anything touching it, right? So if you only had one plus one alliance, only those two alliances behemoths can touch it you can't just drop a behemoth from across a map to that warband no that, that yeah, yeah. no 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 that's yeah. not but uh the behemoth bus so you can say um right you you just can i don't know if if there are two or three four shots well yeah i know the one. behemoth buffs like you teleport there you get the behemoth buffs i thought yeah i thought uh sorry i thought darth was saying like he you could start stacking dropping behemoths onto that tower oh no no, no. Huh? No, no, no. Uh, I was just talking about like behemoth buffs. So now you can share them. So oh, okay. This... I was probably yeah. wrong. Yeah, I was wrong. Yeah. So, so uh, instead of having one alliance capture all the giants because you know you want one really strong alliance, you could since you share the buffs now, one alliance does not have to build to all three of the giants or frost giants, you know, bears and shit. Yeah. And. The alliances can separately be in separate parts of the affiliated region. 
This makes it so much easier to, uh, it's, it's, oh, God damn it. Less stressful for us with territory. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Days figured out. I got 30 days figured out. Yeah. Now, we're coming to the point which we, which I said we're going to talk later about that. Added six aligned skills. After unlocking through aligned research and charging through aligned member donations, the aligned leader and officers can release skills to accelerate aligned development and even shape the course of the war. A fine hall. Increase alliance members' gathering speed. Buildings and battlefield. Increase alliance members' hero XP gained by defeating darklings and increase maximum build speed for aligned buildings. Bad part here. Increase so maximum build speed for alliance buildings. God bless. If, Thank if you. If you use it correctly, uh, like so good during war. Like so good. Yeah. Like right, right away at the begin. You're gonna use that, spam the towers, right? And then yeah. you're probably gonna have. Uh, nah, you have a cooldown for sure. I mean, uh, but uh, think, uh, does, does it mean that we would be allowed to like go past the cap of like 21.9? Yeah. Was it? Yeah, increase maximum bit speed. The maximum bit speed is 21.9, right? Right. So yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. It says yeah, increase you know, like, maximum bit speed. Hold so, off on like leveling your alliance health just to like make sure you can build faster yeah. possibly um uh, storm banger increase alliance member legion attack and movement fees that's very nice behemoth <laughs> fog of war summon some mysteries fog on the battlefield currently legions inside the fog of war are immune to range damage that sounds so okay. this could be sick that's you could put so a good. Fog of War, either like oh. ahead of the tower, you can have like it forces everyone to basically come into the fog. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. oh wait, so, wait, wait. So if the so fog, many things. if the fog units are immune to range damage, does that mean that if archers were to stand right in front of other archers in Fog of War, would still not be able to damage them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone, you're basically creating like a circle or whatever. You know, I'm sure, I'm sure you're yes. gonna drop a circle, and anyone yeah. in that circle can't be damaged at range, so you have to push in. So you can line the front of the fog with infantry. You can create like a little banana or like whatever you're gonna do. Infantry, yeah. drop the fog. Now everyone has to either get around them or like, dude, you can. You can also stuff. push with that so easy the bridge and stuff. Yeah. That's basically yeah. the ultimate Choke. counter against choke points. Oh, now yeah, no one so can good. cry anymore about these stupid choke points. Because now yeah. people yeah. always cried about oh choke points so strong, blah blah blah. You need to um you need to double the power and stuff like that. Fuck that. You just need activity. But okay. Um now anyone no one can basically cry anymore because they can just drop the fog. On the shock point, can go through it, can go up on top of that. They can even, maybe you can use two skills at the same time and get uh, from Storm a Vanguard the movement speed as well. You can go up there and just, you know, don't get any damage. Yeah, yeah. you basically yeah. negate, you negate that like choke point damage with the AoE. Yeah. Yeah. And then last but not least, we had Vigo, Vigo, Bruce, Vigor. Uh, recovers stamina for all aligned member heroes and war pets. If that is that, what I'm thinking that this is, Wait, that is it? It recovers as in like fully zero to hundred. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, if that is yeah. really recovering whole stamina from all aligned members, holy shit, man! That's yeah. Oh no, we have layered location. That would that that would be so OP for all the whales. Yeah, yeah, and because... you just burn them all. Do you like, hey, I'm doing just everyone doing five march rushes over and over, but also healing, and then yeah, knowing you're gonna get rehealed back to like full stamina, and then just going back and then playing normally. Normally, yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, would I mean... be so insane. Oh man, all I can't wait for these skills. Make it, yeah, it's so good. It it creates so many like combinations of you know possibilities and situations that can happen. That yeah. this is like really nice. 
this is allows for this. more strategy. Yeah. Th this is where the leadership of the uh, of an alliance really defines how the war is going to turn out. Yeah, I agree. And then uh, now, last but not least, layer teleportation activates portals near behemoth layers, allowing alliance members to deploy legions instantly at portals, significantly reducing marching time for behemoth raids. That's so easy. That means we can just stay at the behemoth and then just crave a portal to go to our other behemoth, just walk through it, and yeah. easy kill it. Oh, easy. dude, I easy mean, activity. Because now you have people, especially right now, like where everyone's spread out. Across yeah. all the zones, doing different tasks. You just open the portal, everyone just sends their march, boom, pops I mean, in. It also up. sort of it. depends on how, what the cooldown is, what the duration is. Because if it's like a five minute duration, you can't really uh, use it more than once for a yeah. behemoth. No, that's true. But it would be yeah. nice if everyone could, like, hey, get here, everyone ready if we get. 60 people because you gotta think all those people who don't want to teleport you know there's yeah. a lot of people just mm. don't want to teleport um, yeah yeah i mean if you look at our map right now it's like people spread out into all different zones they're fighting uh towers they were doing the other magma you know like there's concentrations of our alliance across the map so it'd be nice if everyone could just teleport at once that's a good i think that's a good one yeah yeah um, what is the last one? Adjusted the road connection for uh, routes for stages and spires. Now, after a stage spire is occupied, the alliance can connect the road to it. Oh, that's so good. After the road is connected, the alliance can use the stage spire as the starting point, basically like the passes. I don't know if you guys saw that in the previous se in the other season, but the stages yeah. uh, and, and spires, you know, you occupied the spire, you were having this, um, um, you were having this, 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 like the path, right? Uh, a territory where you couldn't bid in it, um, but you were needed to bid shit. So you lost like production because you were forced to bid close to the spire so you can bid on yeah. the other side from the spire because of a um, road lens. Uh, but now it's not anymore. Oh, that's so good. That makes it way less um, losing production. Um, and then other improvements. Um, Wardy emoji, optimize zero gift feature, and edit a story summary feature. Yeah, all right. That was the update. I think so. Let Let's give an overall uh, opinion to the entire update. In my opinion, it is a W update. Like, um, especially the changes with the alliance skills that people have skills for donating their alliance points to it and not losing the alliance coins um anymore and also overall the whole system of the home kingdoms and the warband and stuff like that but it's basically going into the way of how the game should be in terms of community perspective um it's w like uh, that's for sure and then also stuff like that the season getting shorter to 50 days making it more intense and more fighting in shorter time all this stuff is what the game have needed in my opinion so the game is not dying i think if they would have not did it and have left it as it is right now people would have been tired of all this stupid shit of alliances hopping and stuff like that um and that there's no real community aspect um so i think overall it's a good update which was really needed yeah i mean i agree I think uh, it's definitely a win. A uh, few question marks we had there. Like I said, the biggest thing I'm worried about is why I quit Rising Kingdoms, which was the cost of migrating. If your kingdom wants to just migrate over and over and you're a whale, I guess, you know, and you're just paying thousands of dollars just trying to follow them around. Or trying but, to move to a new one, it's it gets tiring and it gets expensive. Yeah. Um, and why would you overall, want to do that? Well, it just becomes if you're, like I said, if your server Forced starts failing do. overall, yeah. you know, if your server fails yeah. overall and it's you just have a lapse in leadership, a lapse in everything, and it's like everyone's every man for themselves, basically, like it it happens. Yeah. Uh, 
But outside of that, I do like pretty much every update, honestly. Um, we'll we'll see how it is. I think it's gonna balance. I think the it'll allow other dead servers basically to regain some power. Like a lot of other small groups gonna be able to migrate to them, kind of fill it up, you know. And you're gonna have some like actually active servers, maybe. You know, also uh, what it brings back the jumper projects. You can do now jumper project and stuff like that. That, um, for example, in Rise of Kings, it's the thing, right? Where dead kingdoms, where no leadership is, and just farm accounts. Um, that people making a group and be like, all right, guys, in like one month, we jumping to that dead server. Everyone who like want to follow us can follow us. That would be also yep. a possibility. What comes now? Um, alive in Court of Dragons, where there are groups getting formed um, for reviving these um, dead servers, right? First of all, with only the season migration, which we have right now, and then in Q3 later with a global migration. So, it's like you said, it's gonna definitely gonna bring um, dead servers most likely back alive, and people can, you know. Um, make these groups and play, especially with their friends, which maybe are across the um, the whole game together, and then you know form a kingdom or something. Yeah, because before then, you know, you were just kind of stuck. You're like, okay, yeah. I'm with this server group. Well, I hate all these servers, so I'm just kind of stuck. So yeah. I'm gonna quit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, I I think it it just allows more people to who have progressed to stop quitting. And then, you know, just move around and actually revive old servers. Um, yeah, I, I think it's good. I think everything's pretty good. I hope it's not, like I said, expensive. But what we well, other than uh, other than a few things, like I've other than a few like really, really, uh, you know, questionable things or like, uh. You know how the game, how the developers are actually going to implement it. I think the updates like pretty pretty good. Uh, in mm. terms of uh, it, the the you know the excitement that it brings. And yeah. The game's getting more fast paced, which is good and bad at the same time. We'll we'll basically have to see, and maybe they might have to balance it a little bit after the updates out and the, how the community reacts to it. But yeah. overall, pretty good. Well, I still think it's going to be like your 50 day season. So the season is going to be fast paced and it's going to be like, hey, it's Kingdom vs. Kingdom. Boom, you're in it. You're fighting. You're doing whatever. You might have an ally with the two kingdoms next to you. So it could be slow, but it's going to be fast, furious, and then you're out. And then you're back in your home kingdom for like two weeks. And then you're going to still get that same rest period. So I don't know. We'll see. Maybe it's just. I think it'd be similar to Rise of Kingdoms. Yeah. Well, um, thanks guys for being here with me on the on the update talk. Um, I really appreciate the uh, the talking here, the different opinions on the different points of the update. Um, I hope you guys um have enjoyed that video as well. Let me know in the comments um what you think about this collaboration stuff. Um, if you want to see more update talks in the future, if you want to see me um talking with different persons about the updates um yeah let me know in the comments what you think about that um once again thanks guys for being here um if you shared it and yeah with that guys i'm gonna end you now with a video um stay healthy everyone i wish you a great rest of the day or have a, a great start in the next day and we're gonna see us on the next one